Hi, I'm Varun from Hammer Emissions, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how do you plan, capture, process, and deliver facade inspections using drones. Now, before I get into it, a quick word on facade inspections using drones. As some of you might already know, facade inspections using drones are becoming increasingly popular. So if you think about any building that needs to get inspected, drones are a highly cost-effective method to capture the structure and condition of a building as opposed to getting a cherry picker or a scaffolding solution out, which can be extremely expensive. So if you are basically providing drone services or you're an in-house drone team looking to understand the condition of your facade asset, it's really important to understand that drones can actually cut down the cost of a facade inspection by an order of magnitude or more. So a 10x quad cost reduction or more. And therefore, it pays dividends to understand what it takes to do a successful facade inspection. So without further ado, I'm going to get back into it and let's see you on the other side. Right, so we will be conducting a facade inspection on this building here. Um, what I've got on this screen is essentially Hammer Missions, which is the software platform that we're going to be using to do this facade inspection. And the way the process works is that I'm going to first of all start by creating a mission file. So I'm going to go into Hammer Missions and I'm going to create a folder uh, and let's call it Facade Jobs. And I'm going to start by essentially uh, adding in a new mission file. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say a new mission file. And let's say this is going to be a Facade Mission. And it's, it's, uh, let's say we, we name it after the building. So the Winston Tower is what we're going to be capturing today. Um, so if I open the file, I should be taken to essentially uh, the map. Uh, this particular building that we'll be capturing is actually located in um, in the States, um, close to the beach. And what we, we are going to be doing is we're going to take our map and we're going to navigate to the right location. So it seems like we already have the location coordinates that we want to navigate. Um, so just going to bump those in there. And we can zoom in to see our building uh, in in res in high resolution, but obviously because it's Google Maps, the building is flat, uh, which doesn't really help us when we want to do a facade inspection. And that's the whole point of using drones so that we can do this inspection in not just two D but also three D, fly vertically and capture all that data. Right. So the inspection is due for this particular side of the building. So this particular facade. And so what we will have to plan is how do we fly vertically and, and reconstruct this particular facade in 3D. To do that, I'm going to start by looking at the missions menu and I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose uh, my facade inspection option or the facade mapping option. Now, the difference between the facade mapping and the facade inspection options is that in the facade mapping option, your drone will fly continuously using hammer missions and take images at every single point, it wouldn't necessarily stop. Um, and with facade inspection, the drone will stop and take images. So if you're really looking for very crystal clear images at every single point, and you want to make sure you get the highest detail possible, then we would recommend the facade inspection option. But facade mapping is what we're going to go for today because we want efficiency and we want to collect the data. And we also want to be able to stitch all that data into a 3D model at the very end of this video. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the facade mapping option and Hammer asks me to essentially draw a line along the facade structure or the edge and then click OK or press enter. Right, so this is the edge of the building that I wish to capture. So I'm going to drop a point near the edge and I'm going to drop another point at the other edge and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, once I've done that, a default flight plan will be created for me so I can see these blue points which basically represent the points in which the drone would be flying. And it's hard to tell, but it's actually more than one point at every location, which is because it's a facade flight and therefore you're going to be, going to be flying up and down. And therefore you've got more than one point on every single place in the map because you've got the sort of vertical structure that's being followed. Um, we can adjust the flight plan a little bit by making it much more uh, centric to the building, much more aligned with the building. And um, it doesn't really matter at this stage because what we're going to be doing on site is we're going to readjust all of these flight plans so that it makes sense and it essentially aligns very much to the building. So the key point I'm trying to sort of convey over here is that Google Maps or any mapping system that you might use to create your flight plan 
actually has some discrepancies when it comes to um, the real world. So the mapping system is imperfect, and therefore this is only a rough flight plan that we're creating in Hammer Hub, which is on our desktop. We will be transferring this to our smart controller onto our DJI drone and then adjusting the flight plan on the site. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna basically start planning the settings for this flight. So I'm gonna tap on the settings gear and uh, it's gonna pop up a menu. And once we've got that menu, essentially we're gonna go through it and configure the parameters for our flights. The first thing we're gonna, we're gonna configure is the camera we're flying with. So this is going to be a Mavic 3 uh, Enterprise. So we can essentially just go in and type in Mavic 3 um, uh, Mavic 3 camera. Uh, so we've got the Mavic 3 wide camera and we've got the Mavic 3 um, IR camera. So we're going to go with the uh, Mavic 3T wide camera in this particular instance. Um, there should also be an option for us to essentially select the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise wide camera if you're using that. Um, so essentially we can select the camera we're flying with. Uh, once we've done that, Hammer's going to give us the GSD uh, for this flight, which is 0.27 centimeters per pixel. That looks pretty good. That's actually under one centimeter per pixel. So that should give us very high quality data. Uh, if you don't know what GSD is, we've made a whole video on GSD that we're going to link. So you can go check out that video. Uh, the next setting we're going to set up is the flight mode. And so the flight mode is basically, is your drone going to fly left and right first and then up and down? Or is your drone going to fly up and down and then go left and right as you as you wish? So this mode is generally to adjust whether or not you want to fly up and down first. And for tall buildings, up and down can be faster because you're covering the largest uh, side of the building first. Um, or for the uh, for buildings that are more wide, you could be covering the width first to be faster. So. Um, it doesn't really matter to be honest uh, because safety is prime over here, and a lot of people prefer going up and down, prefer going uh, left and right first and, and gradually going down because getting close to the ground can actually be sometimes unsafe. You want to stay as much in the air as possible. So even though this building over here, from our information, we know that it's quite tall, we're actually going to go with the width first option. So I'm going to leave this with width first. Now, the next thing I need to configure is the altitude for the flight. So now this only has to be an estimate. Um, so this building, um, 100 and 64 feet. We think this building is actually at 150 feet. So we're just going to change that to 150 feet. The actual height can be adjusted on site. So we don't have to get it perfectly right. But um, initial best guess is, is basically what we we're after. And the bottom altitude, we think that this is going to be roughly around um, um, 15 feet. Now, you may or may not find it comfortable to go down to 15 feet. Um, or if you're watching this in Europe or the UK, then uh, to five meters. Um, you would want to select an altitude you're comfortable with, with automated flights. And then once you get down to that altitude, you can always take control manually and fly the rest manually. So um, yeah, it's just about safety first. So make sure you select a good bottom altitude that works well for your building. Right, uh, gimbal tilt. So because this is a facade inspection, we'll be looking straight at the building and therefore we're going to leave the gimbal tilt to be zero zero degrees um horizontal distance so this is the distance to the building so that distance over there uh, 33 feet or 10 meters is um, a good distance um it's giving us a good gsd if we really wanted we could keep we could move this up to 40 feet slightly further away um gives us a bit more distance to the building a bit more confidence and uh, we are more into the sort of area that is less built up and we are confidently able to sort of fly staying away from the building staying at a healthy distance but still capturing 0.32 centimeters per pixel which is pretty good um overlap is something we should move up so we're going to move this up to 80 percent uh we want to make sure that we have high quality data because we're going to be using photogrammetry to stitch all of these images into a facade model and at least 70 percent overlap is really important for that so 70 percent or more is what's required here um, since it's a pretty short flight, even with 80%, so I'm going to go with 80%. The number of pictures isn't that huge either, so I'm just going to leave it at 80%. Um, and what's going to happen is that with all of those parameters, Hammer's is, Hammer Emissions is essentially going to give me my my um, flight speed, the optimal flight speed, which is essentially calculated using all of these different parameters. And um, if you're interested, the math is very simple. It's just it really depends on how many pictures you're taking 
every few meters and it depends on what's the shutter speed of the camera you divide the two values and you get the flight speed per second that you must not exceed otherwise the shutter speed or the shutter is not going to be able to keep up with the with the pace at which you need to take all the photos so um, it's going to calculate that for us if we try to exceed the limit it's going to ask us to use op optimal flight speed um, you can always um, exceed it if you are confident and you feel that you're not going to miss photos it's better to stay on the on the recommended side and if you're curious to learn more about this you can always go and check out um, our video on how to calculate the optimal flight speed if you click on that uh, it's going to take you to our video on optimal flight speed so i'm um, not going to go into that today uh, we've also got a video on gsd in, in case you're curious so gsd stands for ground sampling distance and that's the amount of ground in every pixel or in this case the amount of facade in every pixel of your image generally you want to keep that below one centimeter per pixel for high quality data it's not a hard and fast requirement you might have projects where you want to keep it above one centimeter per pixel or two centimeters per pixel but um, generally you want to keep it around that range that allows for better processing of the data and better like higher quality results Right, um, last few settings, rotate the points 180 degrees. Um, so in this case, we got lucky as Hammer Missions generated the flight plan on this side of the building. Sometimes you would find that the plan by default gets generated on this side. So this option here is really handy to be able to just rotate it to the left or the right or to the top or the bottom of the marked line. You don't have to uh, use this option if not required. In this case, it's not required, so we're just going to leave that. Uh, and show planned images is basically a way for us to see the images that the drone is going to take. So all of these blue points are the actual places where the drone is going to to fly and take the image. Now, obviously, the image is going to be formed on top of the facade somewhere here, which we can't visualize in 2D, um, but we should be able to see in 3D. Um, so yeah, so that's how you would create your flight plan. And you can um, basically set it up like that. You can then... Uh, do a little simulation. So two things that are really useful at this point is A, we need to understand what does the airspace look like in the area we're going to be flying? And B, what does our flight plan look like? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button over here, which shows this airplane with an X mark over, here, over there. So once I click that button, it's going to show me that particular building and it's going to show me the airspace uh, um, uh, in, that, in that area. And uh, it looks quite clear doesn't seem like there's any hazards that I need to be aware of um, so it should be okay um, but obviously there are some there's a town center park here there's uh, there's another Winston Towers Park and there's also a another park that I need to be mindful of but obviously if I was flying somewhere around here there seems to be um, more restrictions on flight in these areas so if I was flying there uh, it would be uh, it's good to be conscious on on uh, what the issues could be so um, that's just a good good safety check. Um, but coming back to Hammer Missions, once you've done that altitude check and our um, flight space check, uh, our safety map check, we can basically do a simulation. So I'm going to press this play button here. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a simulated drone on the map. And it's going to basically follow the flight plan. And what you see is not just the 2D flight plan, but you can also see the 3D flight plan. And this is really, really interesting because that's what we're really after when it comes to the uh, facade inspection. So here we go. We've got now uh, a 3D view. Now the building is obviously still flat, um, but and we know we're covering, we're capturing this facade of the building, and we've got a 3D view showing us what the drone will do in flight. Um, it's going to just give us a, a a better understanding of what we've planned and it's uh, essentially a lawnmower pattern but in the vertical space so we'll be going from the uh on the topmost row we'll be starting on the right then we'll be going making our way down we're making our way to the left going moving down making our way to the right moving down so on and so forth all the way down to uh, 15 feet over here uh, or five meters uh, above the ground surface so that's what a flight plan looks like. Now, if you want to make some changes, we can always go back to the flight plan and we can sort of say, it would actually hmm, not feeling very comfortable with the, with the 15 feet. So I can make it 20 feet and that's going to give me a slightly different flight plan and change that over. Uh, or maybe I want to go top and down or height first so I can change that flight plan and uh, I can go up and down instead. Now, um, I don't know about you, but I prefer staying away from the ground as much as possible and not coming up and down so much. 
even though it might lead to a slightly more efficient plan when it comes to um, the width first mode. So you can always change these parameters. Um, I can actually see my estimates over here on the top left. So I can see it's 25 minutes with the width first plan and 18 minutes with the up and down plan. So it doesn't really matter. You know, shaving off six minutes is not something worth um, when it comes to the risks that there might be on the drone coming down six times or seven times in this flight. So I'm just going to go back to the width first option and that's going to be a default flight plan. Right. Okay. So I've got my flight plan. Uh, if I want it, I can now go back to my folder for all the flight plans and uh, I can also create a copy for this flight plan. If I wanted to sort of fly two different missions, I can just copy this out. Um, so I can call it um, a copy. And um, now I've got two copies of the flight plan. And uh, this one is the original one. And we can go into a copy. And if you wanted to essentially tweak something, maybe you wanted to fly both left and right and up and down. So that's possible if you really want high quality data and you want to just max out the photogrammetry when you come back with your flight plan. Um, you can go height first in the second flight. And so now you've essentially got two different flight plans. I'm going to call this one. Uh, let me just go back and give it a different name. So let me just call this one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm hitting the character limit, of course. So I'm going to just call this remove the Vincent Tower. I'm just going to call this height first. Um, and I'm going to call the next one um, width first. Okay, so now I've got two different flight plans of the same building and one is height first, the other one's width first. So one is going up and down, the other one is going left and right. So this one's going left and right, as I can see. And then the other one is going up and down. So if I can just reconfirm that, uh, press the simulation again, I can see it's going up and down. Brilliant. So now we've got two different flight plans for the same site, one going up and down, one going left and right, and they're capturing data with less than one centimeter per pixel GSD, and they're essentially flying and capturing at least 80% overlap. So this all looks good. I think it's time to send the app, send the flight plan to the app. To do that, um, you can, first of all, you can send the flight plan to other team members. So you can basically press the share option and you can just send it out to other team members to sign off, to review, to ensure that you're communicating what your flight plan is. You can also send this to your client actually. So you can press this option over here and then you can take the public link and you can just pop it into the browser. And once you do that, it's going to create, it's going to show anyone with that public link what, what flight you've planned, both in 2D and 3D. And they can just have a quick review, you know, so just in case they have some comments on what's going to be done on the day, maybe they want to tell you about some site hazards you want to be situationally aware of, or they want to tell you about uh, the altitudes that make more sense. It's always good to get feedback. So you can always send this off to any stakeholder involved in the project and they can get you all of the um, all of the data back with respect to what you need to know for the flight. Right. Um, and so we are now ready to send this to our app. So the workflow here is very straightforward. What you need to do is you need to download Hammer Missions on your iOS app, on your iPad, or your smart controller for Android. And once you've got the app on the iOS, uh, on the iPad, or the smart controller, or your Android device, you can just basically sync your mission from Hammer to your, your tablet. And that's actually quite a straightforward workflow, but if I wanted to go through that, um, it's basically... Uh, it basically works by um, having to basically uh, going to your going to your Android app or iPad, and then essentially um, pulling the mission down from. So on your iPad, you would have a little icon which is shaped like a cloud, which I'm showing over here, uh, that you can essentially use to. So you can use this cloud icon to pull your mission down to your iPad. Um, or you can essentially use a similar shaped icon on your Android app to to sync the mission down. And um, once you've got the mission synced on your iPad or your iOS device or your Android app, you can then connect with the drone and fly the mission. Okay, so uh, the next part of the video is very much on site. So we will be now heading out to the site. We've got the flight plan on, on our iOS device, on our uh, Android device. We'll be heading out, um, capturing the data, and we'll, bring in, we'll be bringing all of that data back in. And uh, we'll see you on the data processing side of this video.
Right. Hello. So we're back. Uh, our mission went well, and we were able to capture um, the facade as expected. Uh, in this particular project, we only did the width first option, even though I went through the height first option. Uh, we thought the images are sufficient to be able to capture all of the data. Um, so what we have here is essentially the data analysis tab. So what we've done, just to give you a quick walkthrough, um, we've essentially created a new project. Uh, in the new project, we uh, called the project a facade inspection, um, and we gave it a facade type, and we basically uploaded all of the images that we took um, with our drone. All of them are typically stored in the SD card of the drone, so we took the SD card of the drone, popped it into the computer, and then uploaded all the images. Now, for the sake of this video, I've already made some I've already done uh, the upload before so that we don't have to sort of wait to look at the project. Uh, but we've got this facade inspection 3D project that I'm going to open and it's going to bring up uh, the the actual data that we captured. So um, looking at this project now, so what you see here on your top left is essentially a 3D model that was reconstructed from the images of the facade. So. Uh, what we did is that we captured all of these images. As you can see, the flight plan is essentially all of these uh, orange, uh, all of these yellow dots is where the drone flew and took an image. So it flew as we planned the flight, basically in a left to right fashion, going up and down and and uh, and also left and right in front of the building. And uh, it took images. And what we did then did is we processed those images. So we clicked on the process button. And once we clicked on the process button, we chose the 3D model outcome, um, no ground control points, just 3D model, and we hit process. And um, after a couple of hours, this is the results. So we've essentially got a photorealistic 3D model of the facade reconstructed from just the vertical flight images without having to do the top or the sides, just the facade that we are interested in we're able to essentially uh, reconstruct a 3D model. And um, just to give you an idea for um, how that 3D model looks and works, I'm just gonna sort of go into the full screen mode. And what you can see uh, is you can see the, um, this is essentially a building as you can tell under construction or under refurbishment or basically under construction at this point. And you're able to essentially uh, view the 3D model or view the building in 3D. And um, that just adds a whole new dimension to do the to doing the inspection, because you know you've got what we call in the industry a digital twin of the building, where you've got a living, breathing replica uh, in the uh, of the building in your computer. And instead of getting a cherry picker out or scaffolding out to do the inspection, the inspection can now be done at the comfort of your office with a coffee alongside to to look at the building and to understand. What are the structural issues? Um, what does the cladding look like? What are the fire safety issues look like? So, um, right. So the workflow from here on is to essentially go through the images. Now, an engineer or surveyor would generally look at this building. And what you can do is you can invite them to the project. So you can click on the share option and then you can bring uh, them to the, to, the, to the project. So you can add them to your team. And essentially all you have to do is add their email address, user at email.com. And then you click on the invite button and they'll be invited to the project and they can join you in doing this inspection. Alternatively, you can also send them a link which allows them to see what you've done on your side, which they can't create, um, which they can't do the inspection on, but they can still view all the data. So um, what you want to do from here on is that you can essentially click on the different images. So you can click, let's say, you click on one of these images it should load up on the right and it should load up with all of the details that have been captured. So you can essentially really zoom in and look at that building. Um, and what you can do is you can cycle through all of these different images. So you can go from left to right uh, and essentially um, go through every single image to ensure that everything looks fine. And generally what happens is you have engineers that look at a building and they might want to point sample the building so for example, they might go to this particular part of the building and they might find that there's an issue there and they can create annotations. So using the shift key, you can essentially click and create an annotation and you can sort of say um, a cabling issue, uh, health and safety risk, 
And you can create that annotation basically um, on that image and that annotation gets stored on that image. Now, not only can you create the annotation, but you can also essentially mark the severity of it. So by default, it's marked as an orange severity, which might be classified as a mild issue. But if you thought this issue was really severe, you can actually create, give it as a severe um, warning. And so essentially it gets marked in red. So you've got a severe issue and maybe this is just a missing paint issue, um, which is more mild. And now what happens is that you've got um, those issues not only stored in the image, but you've also got them stored in your map of all the different issues. So I can click on any one of these images on the 3D model, and it's going to bring me to that particular uh, image. So for example, if you've got a broken window, that can be uh, marked up. Uh, there seems to be a severe issue over here, which is a cabling issue we've just mentioned. And you've got other issues marked up on top of the roof, which have been captured. So essentially, you can mark all of these images. They get shown uh, both in the 3D model in the cloud of, of points and also in the um, in the in the images themselves. You can filter for all the issues. So you just click on this annotated images button and you can sort of see all the issues. So you can quickly cycle through all those all those images as well. So you can basically have a very quick way to peruse all the issues uh, and sort of say, okay, well, yeah, that's an issue. That's also the issue I see, okay. And that's just a quick way for you to be able to document all the issues. Uh, there might be things that you want to document on the model itself that maybe aren't so visible on the images. So maybe you want to look at, uh, maybe you want to measure something. Maybe you want to figure out, uh, does everything stack up with respect to measurements as the way they should? So you can essentially use the measurement tool over here. Um, and um, Or maybe you can use the area measurement tool uh, to understand, okay, what is the... Um, what is the width of this uh, balcony over here um so you can click uh, and create these dots and then that should give you a length for that particular um so it seems like it's uh you've got 1.5 1.5 meters in length when it comes to this particular um a balcony or this particular structure that's sticking out and what you can do is you can leave a comment so you can leave a comment here and you can sort of say um um, structural issue with um, balcony and you can add a description to that issue or the engineer can add a description to that issue um, so I'm just going to say something like this is just a demo issue um, and I'm going to say point A point B and point C and all of those things are going to get stored uh, and I can mention this to be a highly urgent issue. And I can save that onto the um, onto the building itself. And so now that's going to get stored in that model over there in that particular place. So it's very visible and I can, not only me, but somebody else can actually look at that issue and understand what is going on over there. So uh, now just to sort of get rid of the measurement for a second and just leave the issue there. Um, we can sort of see that that's something that's going to get tracked. And what other stakeholders can do is that they can come in and they can sort of add a comment and they can say, this is currently being resolved. Excuse my spellings there, currently. And uh, they can essentially save that comment. And so that comment gets added by me at the moment, but there might be other stakeholder that comes in as a new comment. And you can understand that this is now a new way for you to work on the project by using the the digital twin or the building twin updated with all the comments. And so the repair technicians can come in and they can sort of think about what is the plan and they can resolve this particular issue as resolved, um, which turns it from red to green. So um, I think the key thing to understand here is that, you know, when you start getting into tools like this, um, you start moving yourself away from just providing drawn images. You start providing a solution. Because at the end of the day, when a customer is contracting a drone service, or if you're an in-house team trying to capture this data and some stakeholder has assigned you this project, nobody's really looking for drone images. And to be honest, most people don't even care that it's captured with a drone. I think the drone is a really good thing that makes the inspection 10x cheaper or more efficient. But at the end of the day, everyone cares about the data. 
And more importantly, everyone cares about the condition of the building or what steps needs to be taken or what action needs to be taken on the building. And if we can get all the stakeholders and clients as aligned as possible on that action part and everything that we're providing them allows them to act on it, then the drone data actually is no longer a cost. It's more of a it's more of a value uh, driver. And I think that's what a lot of people can get behind. And um, the way we look at building tools, it's all about how do we get people to act as opposed to sort of uh, just capture the data. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. And uh, once you've got your inspection done uh, and you've cycled through all the images, you've cycled through all the comments, what you can do is you can export everything into a report. So you can click on the report button and you can add an introductory paragraph. So you can, I can say something like, this is a facade inspection demo. We hope you found it useful. Um, and I can add a cover image. So I can select that option and that should give me the option to add a cover image. I'm not gonna add that today. Uh, I can add a custom logo. So if you're delivering this to a third party, you can add the logo on your report. You can also, check whether or not you want to export all the image names or all the export the image comments or also the tags. So everything that we just demoed, all that data, do you want to export it into reports? And do you want the guests to have links, access links back into the platform? So essentially you can check, check that option if you want that to be the case. And all you have to then do is essentially click on generate reports. Um, so I'm going to click that button. Um, and um, because it's going to take a couple of seconds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you what the example reports looks like through a different tab. So, um, so this is what the example report would look like. You would essentially have your project name. You would have all the images. You would have the annotated data, all of the metadata in the images, and also all of the um, different properties in these images and all the issues will be encoded in there as well. Um, just to look at another project, um, so this was more of a complete building 3D model. You can look at, you can have your logo in the reports. You can have an introductory paragraph. You can have a cover image and you can essentially cycle through all of the different issues that have been found on the building. And you can have um, the facade inspection uh, mention all of these issues so, so that once again, your stakeholder or client can actually act on these issues, which is what, uh, what, which is what the aim should all of these inspections be. Right, okay. So um, going back to our platform, so you still got a report being generated. Uh, and whilst that is going on, I uh, just want to mention that facade inspections are becoming increasingly popular, but at the same time, they do require an, an immense amount of skill. So it's important that all of these different workflows, especially on the mission planning and flight automation side, they are executed with a high amount of precaution and you're ensuring that safety is very much paramount in your operations. Some of the things that we've seen that are quite important is to ensure that you always have GPS if you want to go into a flight that is automated. Uh, if you don't have GPS and you don't feel comfortable flying automated, you could fly manually and you still have the flight plan, which allows you to ensure that you're taking the images in the right place, which is what you really care about. Um, the automation is nice and it's um, actually really helpful when you have the the ability to fly automated, but if you're flying in a very congested space, it's better to sometimes fly automated. As long as your images are taken in the right right place, you can still upload them to Hammer Missions and you can still get a 3D model, the inspection reports and the measurements and all of those different nice things from the platform. You don't always have to fly automated, even though I, I understand that uh, automation can make things a lot better when it comes to collecting high quality data. So, um, I'm going to let this run and once this is done, I'm just going to show you the final reports. And uh, with that, I think we will probably be concluding this video. So um, we'll see you when the report is finally generated. Right, okay. So, uh, and we're back and the report has been generated. Um, took roughly five minutes, uh, which was good for me to me uh, to refresh myself with a coffee. So I'm now going to essentially look at that report. Uh, I'm going to bring it up over here. And uh, what we've got here is essentially what uh, we had promised. We've got an introductory paragraph, which is just a single line. And we've got all of the different images for this inspection um, put together in a nice little report. 
Um, and each one of these images has the issue area and also all of the image data exported. And what any stakeholder that's looking at this report can do is that they can always go back to the platform. So we can click on the open in 3D web view button and that should take them straight back to the platform. And it should show essentially the building that you've just captured. It should show that specific image in the report that they clicked on and they can see the whole platform, even though they're not logged in, they don't need to have their own account. Right, so um, so that was a job well done. Um, hopefully we have, um, we have been able to walk you through the end-to-end -end process and how to plan, capture, process, visualize, and deliver your facade inspections using drones. Uh, we hope you found the video really helpful. If you're curious about some of the applications we've been working on with respect to AI-based defect detection or with respect to being able to automatically um, reconstruct um, the, the optimal flight plan from your last 3D building model that you created, uh, feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, we're always available to have a chat at team at hammermissions.com. Hopefully this video was useful. Drop us all your comments in the, in the comments box. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next end-to-end -end video at Hammer Missions.